Rugged Adventures, Adventures, Adventures. Your premier source for a guy talking to himself in the woods about guns. Guns, ammunition, black leather gloves. Putting in the research to do the science. We put liquid paper on a bullet. It was fun. Subscribers, possibly you. What's up guys, welcome back to Rugged Adventures. Today, we're looking at subsonic ammunition. We are going to see how deadly exactly is subsonic ammunition because a lot of times people kind of poo poo on subsonic rounds, especially things like these uh, 223 Remington subsonics that we used. I used it in a short, I used it in uh, another full length video. A lot of people said that these really didn't do anything uh, compared to maybe these 22 long rifle uh, subsonics, which is funny because I, I put this in a post just a uh, few minutes ago that even though these are labeled, one of them's labeled subsonic, one of them's labeled standard uh, velocity. There's both 1070 feet per second. So if someone from CCI or someone out there can tell me the difference, I'd uh, be pretty happy to, to know what that is. And so today we have a bunch of different subsonic rounds we're going to be testing. Uh, you saw the 22s, you saw the 223s. We're also going to be looking at 300 blackout. We're going to be looking at these uh, big bore rounds from Black, Bu Black Butterfly Ammunition and the 458 SOCOM. And then we have 45 ACP as well as 9mm, which is sitting over there on my other table. We're going to be taking a look at all these and how potentially deadly they are. And, you know, a lot of the big YouTube channels use those uh, ballistic heads that are filled with, uh, you know, all the internal guts and such. Uh, but those are super expensive. And for our budget here, unless you get down here and write me a check for $10,000, like uh, Dale Doback once said, um, we have something different, and my one just actually rolled away, so let me run and get one over here. We have coconuts. These are widely um, said to have about the same properties, about the same level of density of hardness as the human skull. They're actually a little bit uh, less dense, or a little bit harder to get through, but we're going to shoot these with all of these. I also have uh, some pieces of 2 by lumber that we'll see if these bullets can go through, and just see what each one of these does to um, to each one of the, the coconuts that we have. And they're actually pretty juicy, if you guys can hear that. I've never really had a real commercial coconut in my hand, so we'll see how much juice we get out of these things. Let's get shooting. First up, we have the 22 out of this Ruger Mark IV with the uh, uh, Advanced Armament Prodigy Suppressor. And 22 oftentimes gets a lot of crap, like it's a weak round or, or whatever. And it, you know, it is, it's in a lower power, but like it's still gonna do some damage. So first off, we're just gonna shoot that uh, two by 12 uh, pressure treated wood up there. Just see if it can go through. And we're about uh, 20, 21 feet away. So that's kind of like your standard seven yard uh, engagement. So we'll see how this does just going through a, uh, a two by 12 from, you know, 20, 21 feet. We'll just kind of put it wherever and then go back behind and see what's going on. And I heard him fly through the woods there uh, once I remembered to take the safety off. So we'll uh, see what the backside of that looks like. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in. And one, two, three, four, five out. So it actually did stop two of them. Uh, that's kind of interesting. I didn't think it would stop any, to be honest with you. Although some of these, like this one right here, and maybe this one right here, look like they might be sort of tumbling on the way in. So I don't know. Let me go get our coconut and see what it can do. So this is our friend Dragon. He refuses to call me Nighthawk, and I don't like that. So we're going to see what happens when a 22 uh, deals with my problems. And we scooched back a little bit. I don't know if that's going to help, but I did feel a little bit nervous being that close. So we scooched back a little bit. And you'll notice that we're not wearing any ear protection today because we're shooting subsonics silenced. And that's one of the cool parts about it. So let's see if anything at all happens if we hit this guy with a 22. If I can hit it with a 22. Ah, it's just to the right. There we go. Uh, that was supposed to be a representation of a skull, a human skull, although not as hard. And as you saw, we pretty much blew it right in two with a 22, which is, you know, regarded as one of the weakest rounds that there is out there. Um, honestly, I don't know if this video is going to get much more interesting from here, but we'll see. So next is going to be our 223 subsonic, and we're just going to go up in bullet weight. This is a 77 grain bullet. The first one was a 40 grain, and this is a hollow point bow tail. And that's what a lot of these uh, these uh, subsonics will do is they'll either try to increase their aerodynamic efficiency through like bow tail or their uh, stopping power as far as making them hollow point and being able to put all the energy that they have, you know, albeit less than the supersonics, into the target. And so you know these have to be under the speed of sound, which is a set limit. Usually, add more velocity to a bullet to get it to have have more energy. In the case of subsonics, you can really only add weight. 
And so let's see what these do first to our two by 12, see if they can go through. A lot of people said that these were good for nothing. Um, and we will uh, see, what, see what happens. So let's see, we'll put them over here on the right side. And you can hear those things whipping through the woods. This doesn't cycle because it's uh, not set up for subsonics. A lot of people told me just to change the entire gun, the gas system, the buffer spring, everything to run this round that I rarely ever fire. Uh, not going to do that. But uh, if you guys are using these, oftentimes they do not, uh, they don't cycle unless you configure the gun specifically for that. So these two are two subsonic 5.56 and I was aiming up here and I have this uh, sighted into about 100 yards or 100 yards. And so we're about uh, two inches low at this range. And if you come here to the back, not only do they go through, but I mean, they're, they're, they're taking chunks out here. Um, the subsonic 223s for everyone that said that they don't do anything, that they're nothing. I mean, uh, that's gonna that's gonna put a hurting on you. I don't really care who you are. We've got our coconut down there and uh, we're ready to go here. Let's see, you know, if this if this works, I'm sure it's gonna just destroy it. I've actually set this one up like on its, so it's top and bottom are, are facing instead of the side. I think that might've had some uh, effect on the 22, but uh, I sort of, I sort of doubt it. Here we go. That may not have broken it. Let's hit it again. So you know what? Let's take a look at it before we shoot it again. That is where the bullet hit. And this was up against the backside of the stop here. So I am actually not sure if that bullet is inside there or not. We'll shoot it again, see if we can break it open. If we find two bullets or two entry wounds into there, we'll uh, then we'll know. Second try. I, I don't know if it got through again. I don't know, we're gonna have to look. So we've got a second hole right there, and we've got this on the other side. And that looks like a, an exit wound to me, um, or at least I would say fatal damage. But the, the biggest kind of factor is that we have fluid leaking out of it. So let me see if I can open this thing up, see if there's any bullets in there. Yeah. Dang it. Okay, opened up. Yep, we got at least a bullet in there. Or no, we don't. No, we don't. That was a lie. That was just a piece of shell. Um, so what I can see here is, and I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this or not, we do have two entry wounds in that uh, in this coconut here. One right there, and then one lower down in there. And I don't know if the bullets went all the way through and are just gone and I don't see them, but I think this, this is, that this is an exit thing there. But uh, I don't know. That uh, Having it on its end like that definitely uh, was more durable. On further investigation, this is where those things were sitting. I saw these two things here. I thought that they were just maybe uh, where the where the uh, coconut itself had just bunt, uh, you know punched back into that wood. But then when I come back here, we have two exit holes at the same spot, and I thought that I heard things flying off into the woods over here. So I think that those rounds actually just went straight through and uh, didn't even have time to expand. I think they just, just punched through. Next up, we have nine millimeter. This is a 147 grain uh, full metal jacket. We're gonna be using the PSA Dagger, and this is a hybrid 46 suppressor, which we'll be using for the rest of the test, and the one we use on the AR-15. You can use this on a whole bunch of calibers. Uh, but the thing that I found is out of uh, barrels this long, nine millimeter typically is subsonic anyhow. I'll get about 50-50, even if they say that they're uh, you know supersonic rounds. So we'll see what this does. And the, the nice thing is between like a, like a 115 grain bullet or something like that, the 147 uh, does pack a little bit more of a punch and helps cycle this because with this big, you know, rifle full auto rated suppressor, it does struggle a little bit to cycle on uh, on nine millimeter pistols if you, uh, you don't have this thing like really like death grip in your hands. But we'll put a couple in this board, see what happens just with a uh, just nine millimeter. And right there, it was a failure to feed. Uh, sometimes you get that. And it did the same thing again. Ah. And one more. We'll see if we can get one to cycle. And we did. Sometimes it helps to put in the, uh, putting some lube here on the piston where that goes uh, into the suppressor there. 
but really just having a real firm grip helps a lot. Three entrances, those two are pretty close together. That's kind of neat. And yeah, you know, big time blowout in the back here. Um, the bigger the bullet that we get going the same speed, we're just gonna get more of that uh, you know violent action on the back end. That's what she said. Nine millimeter, 147 grains, coconut. I think I heard, I heard that bullet go all the way down to the end, but we'll shoot it. I'm just gonna shoot it again from here while we're just standing here. And there's the uh, there's the liquid out of it. It's a pretty devastating impact. Um, Again, subsonics, they're, they're legit and they'll get the job done. You guys want to see me trigger every 1911 45 fan on the face of the earth ever? And now we're also going to be using 230 grain steel cased ammunition. These are naturally subsonic. There's nothing fancy about this. That's one of the beauties of the 45 ACP. And we'll see what it does to our board here. I'm sure it's going to pretty much obliterate it, but hey, what the hey? The worst part about this one is, down the sight, it is very hard to uh, see the target. It's impossible to see the target with this giant rifle suppressor, so you kinda gotta just guess where you're shooting, really. It's kind of in just, you know, uh, it's probably right about there. And let's see, we hit a little bit low there, and we one right above it. Let's go take a look. The nice part about 45 ACP is it's about as subtle as a jackhammer. There's our nine millimeter holes. These are our 45s. Uh, compare that to the size of my finger, and these things are enormous. Obviously, just went right through. Huge blowouts in the back from where they came through. This should be no surprise to anyone. This is uh, one of the big rounds that won World War II. It was in World War I, it was in Vietnam, Korea. It's a sledgehammer. Thus far, we haven't really had one that's just been obliterated. The nine millimeter sorta of did it. I'm guessing that this has the best chance. We're gonna put a couple rounds into it. Sometimes it takes a couple to get on target. Again, you can't really use the sights through this uh, through this suppressor, it's just kind of the way it is, but I'm sure that we're gonna get there uh, by the end of the day. Let's try right here, and there you go. First shot, I mean, just obliterated it. I don't think anyone would have, uh, you know, any any other idea than that, but the fun thing is, like, listen to how quiet this thing is. I'll just shoot it into the dirt down the range. And there's no problems with the thing cycling. There's so much power with that round that it is just, it's a blast to shoot. It's quiet. You're getting the full power of the 45 ACP. Uh, it's, it's really just an awesome round. So next up we have the 458 SOCOM. And this is shooting a 476 grain hollow point bullet. It, it, the, uh, there's uh, lines etched down the side of this. If it focuses, it probably won't focus on the bullet because it's focusing on me. Uh, but this is, these are from Black Butterfly Ammunition. They are rated at 975 uh, feet per second out of a 16 inch barrel delivering about a thousand pounds of energy subsonically. And yes, we are still using the same hybrid 46 that we started off with nine millimeter with. Uh, even though this is a much larger, much more powerful bullet. Uh, th this thing is awesome. I can't recommend a multi-caliber suppressor more if you only have the money or the time or whatever for just one. Uh, this is great. I'm sure that there's others out there that work equally as well. But let's see what this does with this uh, wood board. I'm sure it's going to absolutely obliterate it. Um, let's put a couple in there right now. And they make the weirdest sound after they hit and go through something because there's uh, there's lines. They come out like this, like a big, huge hollow point. And then if they keep going, they're going through the air. And I hope you guys could hear that, but a lot of times the microphone doesn't pick it up. So I was able to put two right on top of each other. Uh, but the other side really isn't that impressive. This is where they came out at. I don't know if they didn't have enough time to expand, but uh, I'll put some pictures of them, the uh, used ones that I've done from other tests in here. Uh, they're crazy, they're, they're insane. So for our final coconut of the day, 458 SOCOM, 476 grains, 975 feet per second. Let's put this guy to bed. Ah, I missed him. There we go. So it looks like I hit it sort of right here at the top, but what it did was it fractured all the way around this coconut and came out uh, the backside there. If you look at the backside of our target here, it's starting to get pretty eaten up with these larger 
uh, rounds like this. And so, you know, when you're looking at subsonic ammunition, and you know, a lot of folks say that it's you know much less powerful, and sometimes that is the case in these smaller calibers. But even our 22 and our 223 uh, subsonic, they did fabulous jobs of either penetrating it, or as we got into the bigger calibers, which I'm sure everyone thought that they would, but they pretty much obliterated the targets when they hit them. So guys, be sure to like this video if you like what's going on today. Subscribe down below. Uh, if we can get some money coming in here, we can get some of those uh, those, those, those dummies. Or if uh, Dale Doback's father will write us a check for $10,000, we can stop wrecking his boat while we're making rap videos on it. I appreciate you guys watching today, and I'll see you in the next one.